Hi, in this video we're going to do some Venn diagram examples. These examples are coming straight from the sample questions for exam P. So let's look at the first one. We've got a probability of A union B of 0.7, probability of A union B prime of 0.9, and, the pro and we're asked to calculate the probability of A. And we're given these, these values uh, for answer choices, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0.8. And so, uh, again, I've mentioned this several times already, that I'm going to use Venn diagram. So when I set up a Venn diagram, it's going to look like this. And now I have, uh, I'm not told how many people to start with in my survey or in the sample space. And so I've got to make up a number here. So I look at the probabilities in the problem, and I look at the answer choices, and I see they're all to one decimal place. So I feel like, well, I'm thinking to myself, well, let me start with, with 10 in the survey that would move uh, all the decimals one place over, and, and I'm, I'm dealing with integers now. So let me just start with 10 in the survey and see if, you know, that's, that's a reasonable starting number in the survey. Okay, now I, I see that the probability of A union B is 0.7, and so that would tell me, since I had 10 people that I'm starting with in the survey, that 7 would be, in, the number of outcomes of A union B would be 7. Likewise, the number of outcomes of A union B prime would be 9. And so now I don't know how to set, I don't know how to, uh, uh, you know, separate those seven into how many were in A but not in B, how many were in A and B and so forth. I don't really know how to, uh, I'm not given enough information at this point to, uh, to numerically give values in each of the regions in the Venn diagram, so I'm just going to use some letters to represent those numbers. And so let's say I've got X, Y, and Z in these, in these uh, numbers in these positions right there. Now keep in mind you have to account for all 10 people, so if you add up X, Y, and Z, you might not get 10. And so the 10 minus the X minus Y minus Z would be the number of people outside of event A and outside of event B. And now I'm asked to calculate the probability that uh, a randomly selected person or, or the probability of A, which is the number of outcomes in A divided by the number of outcomes in the sample, and it, based on the, the, the values in the Venn diagram that I have, the number of outcomes in A is X plus Y. So the probability would be X plus Y divided by 10. Now, what I recognize when I see that so that's, that's what you should start with, is what is it that you're asked to calculate? And what I see, I'm asked to calculate, I'm trying to get the expression x plus y over 10. I'm trying to get a numeric value for x plus y over 10. What I recognize is I don't need to know an x value to do that. I don't need to know the y value to do that. I need to know what the x plus y value is. So keep that in mind when you see you know, when you write out what it is that you're trying to find, sometimes you might not be able to find the individual pieces of some expression, but maybe the, the, the whole expression, you know, you will be able to find. So let's, I, that's going to happen in this example. So let me show you, uh, show you what's going to happen here. So now let's go back and, and form some equations involving X, Y, and Z. Uh, first of all, I know the number of outcomes of A union B is 7. So that would tell me that x plus y plus z, that's the number of outcomes in A union B, that, that's 7. And then if I look at the number of outcomes of A or B prime, that would be, that would be the x plus y is the number of outcomes in A, and then uh, B prime that, uh, that I haven't already counted would be 10 minus x minus y minus z. And if you add all of that up, add x plus y to... 10 minus x minus y minus z, you'll get 10 minus z. So that's why I have that equation right there. The 10 minus z equals, uh, equals 9. That comes from knowing that the number of outcomes of A union B prime is 9. And so that's easy enough. I can solve for z. Z is 1. And then I'll plug that back into the original equation. I get that x plus y would actually be 6. And even though I haven't found what the x value is or the y value, in fact, I don't think you're given enough information to find either one of those values. Now, I don't know if you are or not. I don't, I don't, I don't really care because I'm looking for x plus y. That's, but that's what I'm, I'm, I'm asked to find here. And so I get x plus y is 6, so the probability of event A would be, uh, would be 0.6. Let me make another observation on, on these. When you see probabilities like this, I'm looking at answer choice A and answer choice E. The 0.2 and the 0.8, they add up to 1. Answer choice C and answer choice D add up to 1. So remember, probabilities of complementary events add up to 1. So I'm looking at, 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 at these answer choices, and since A and E represent probabilities of complementary events, and C and D represent probabilities of complementary events, I'm thinking my, my answer is going to come from one of those four choices. So immediately when I saw this problem, I thought, I bet it's not B, because B doesn't have a complementary uh, probability uh, in the answer choices. So that's just kind of a trick that sometimes, uh, you know, might be helpful. We might be wrong on that, and the answer might end up being B, but 
more times than not, I don't think it is. <laughs> so, okay, now let's look at another example. Uh, on this example, we have an insurance company examines its pool of auto insurance customers and has the following information. So you have an insurance company with auto insurance customers, and part one says all the customers insure at least one car. Well, they're probably not auto insurance customers if, they, if they're not insuring at least one car, so that's not really telling me a whole lot. Uh, part two, though, says 70% of the customers insure more than one car. Part three says 20% of the customers insure a sports car. And then of the uh, part four, of those customers who insure more than one car, 15% insure a sports car. And then I'm asked to calculate the probability that a randomly selected customer insures exactly one car that is not a sports car. So let me set up uh, the Venn diagram first. And so the Venn diagram, I have two events. I have an event M. M is representing here that the customer insures more than one car. And S is representing the event that the customer insures a sports car. And now I look at what is it that I'm asked to calculate. I, I look at the event that I'm asked to calculate, the probability that a randomly selected customer insures exactly one car. So they're not insuring more than one car. One car. So that's an M prime. And, so that's an intersection, the car is not a sports car, so that's an S prime. So I'm looking for the probability of M prime intersect S prime, and, uh, M prime, and, and so of course that would be the number of outcomes of M prime intersect S prime uh, divided by, uh, you know what, I put 100 here because I kind of got ahead of myself. Uh, the 100 is because I'm going to start with a survey of 100. I'm going to assume that n is 100. And the reason I'm going to assume that n is 100 is I'm looking at all the answer choices. I'm looking at all the probabilities. It looks like if I multiplied everything by 100, I would clear out all the fractions. So I'm going to have this, uh, I'm going to start with a number that I think is going to clear out all the fractions and then uh, leave me with whole numbers. So I'm talking about whole numbers of people doing, doing this or, or that. Okay, so let's see what happens. Uh, if you start with 100 people in the survey, uh, part two says that 70% of the customers insure one, more than one car. So that would say 70% uh, or 70 people, 70 of the 100 are insuring more than one car. Those are the number of people who are insuring more than one car. Likewise, part three would say 20 people would be uh, insuring a sports car. And now let's look at part four because that's a little bit tricky. It says, of the customers who insure more than one car. So that's not all 100 customers. That's those 70 customers that we're talking about. And it says 15% of them insure a sports car. So if they're, uh, uh, if they're insuring more than one car and then insuring a sports car, you're counting the number of people who are in the intersection of M and S. And that intersection would be 15% of the 70, 0.15 times 70, or 10.5. So I will put 10.5 in the intersection. Now, I'm looking at 10.5, and I think you're going to be hard-pressed to try to find 10.5 people somewhere. So I end up with a decimal. But don't get, don't get bogged down in that. Don't worry about the decimal, because when I'm looking at probabilities, I'm taking ratios of values, and the decimals are just going to be irrelevant at that point. So even though I have 10.5 people there in the intersection, 10 point, I'm saying 10.5 insure more than one car and insure a sports car. Don't worry about it being a decimal value. Just move on and, and continue the process of filling out the values in the Venn diagram. And so the way we move outside of the 10.5, let's look at uh, there were 70 people who were in the set, 70 outcomes in event M. You've accounted for 10.5, so now there's 59.5 others outside of those, uh, of those who were in event S. Likewise, if you look at event S, there were, there were 20 outcomes for event S, but you've accounted for 10.5, so 9.5 have to be outside of the intersection. And if you add up all of those values right there, the 59.5, the 10.5, and the 9.5, you'll end up, up with uh, 79.5, but I have to account for all 100. That means that 20.5 would be outside of both, uh, of both cap M and cap S. And actually, uh, I look at the probability that I'm calculating as the intersection of uh, uh, of M, uh, of the complement of M and the complement of S. So how many are not in M and also not in S? That is actually those 20.5 that we were just talking about. So my answer is 20.5 divided by 100 or 0 0.205. Now let me come back to uh, this uh, real quick, come back to the statement that 
maybe you didn't like that there were 10.5 people there that were, uh, uh, you know, 10.5 customers that insured more than one car in a sports car. I could have gotten rid of that if I wanted to by increasing the size of the sample from, from 10, uh, I'm sorry, from 100 to 1,000. So let me show you what happens if I change the, uh, the starting value of the sample size from 100 to 1,000. Look, it just adds, uh, it, it, I'll just go back and forth, it just, it just adds uh, another zero on the end of the, of the integer values and the 10.5 becomes, it just moves the decimal uh, one place over on, on everything. But then when I take the, the ratio, I, instead of taking a ratio of 20.5 to 100, I'm taking a ratio of 205 to 10,000, and I still get the same answer. That's my point. I'm going to get the same answer. So, uh, in, in fact, there's going to be problems where there's no starting value. Uh, so it's going to sound weird, but I'll, you'll see this in, in I'll, I'll do an example like this later on. But there's going to be examples where you can't set in to be any specific number so that you get integer values for everything. And it has to do with how the information is, is given to you. Okay, so the last thing I want to comment on with this, uh, comment about on, on this problem, is this, is this statement right here, number four, that of these customers who insure more than one car, 15% insure a sports car. This is actually what's called a conditional probability, and we're going to, uh, it, it's, it's kind of outside the scope of basic probabilities. It's a little bit harder than what I would consider a basic probability, and that's why we haven't covered it yet. But, um, but I, I still do the problems the same way that uh, conditional probabilities we'll, we'll get to in a, in a later video. And you'll see I do the problems using a Venn diagram again. So I, think it, I think it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.